No oh, shit. Bam, we're live. Wow. 28 seconds without a word. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Open. No bam. Sorry, Libby. Oh, bam. We're live. I started making some last minute changes to this morning show. And uh I, I I forgot where I was. I forgot my name. I apologize. I apologize. Unacceptable. We're all professionals here. There's no there's no need for that kind of sloppiness. Jeez Louise, good morning, everyone. Golf, Foxtrot, Yankee, good morning. Coach Ken, good morning. Hmm. Logan Mars, good morning. Wow. What's up, uh, Logan? You're back, back in the game. Mike, good morning. Hey. What's up, dude? Good, mo good morning. Oh, I have the wrong uh, audio on. My bad. Hey, thanks for coming on, dude. Short notice. Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is exciting. Uh, you're doing a level one at your uh, gym. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. We we've, we've had uh, Dustin Virgil training at our gym for a while, and uh, you know he's he's a little connected with the HQ staff, and and we got the opportunity to host an L one a couple years ago, and and uh, you know they liked they liked the gym, so they keep keep hosting them and it's it's such an awesome opportunity just to to have them here at the gym locally which is cool hey mike hey mike why did i think that he owned a uh do you call it a tascadero or a tuscadero a tascadero a tascadero okay i thought that was the joke way of saying it like nirvana or critten no no no, no it's it actually translate okay. yeah it translates to mud hole I believe in Spanish is the the local joke. Is that true? I be I believe it is. Awesome. I I've, I've uh, wanted it to be true, so I've never verified it. Okay. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, a Tascadero is now correct me, Mike. Two hundred and fifty miles north of Los Angeles, and ninety three point two miles south of San Francisco. Uh, it's. Probably about halfway in between both of those, almost oh, exactly shit, in the middle. Okay, so I screwed up. Okay, so right uh, uh, on the Pacific Ocean, uh, not spoken about a lot, uh, a really cool place. Um, everyone drives by it when you're on your way to um, the, the, the sugar capital, Disneyland, from, from Northern California to the sugar capital, Disneyland. And uh, a, a cool place. Wine, is it wine country too, Atascadero? It's pretty close. Paso Robles is, is the, you know, the next Napa and we're 10 minutes away. So we get a lot of spillover when, you, you know, people stay, you know, they can't find something good. They stay in a Tascadero. Uh, we've had a lot of drop-ins this summer. It's interesting. Oh, from people uh, doing wine country or yeah, uh, a Tascadero CrossFit is a place to go to work out in between your hangovers. Correct. Very correct. In in between trying to pretend like you're sophisticated and you're taking your wife fans somewhere fancy. That's correct. Uh, how long has the gym been around and why did I think Dustin Virgil owned that gym just cause he's so famous in the community or did he used to? Own well, it? he used to own it. Um, and then he, he sold it to, to a buddy of ours and they, they changed it up. So for a period of like three or four years, it, it wasn't a task at our CrossFit. Um, they were still doing, you know, group classes and stuff, but it, it kind of, it wasn't a CrossFit affiliate then. And, uh, when, when that guy moved out, I nagged, snagged up the building and, and I asked Dustin if he would allow me to use his name, use the name that he built. Um, and he was all for it. And so we, we brought it back, uh, April 1st of last year. So, it's, uh, it's been pretty cool. And it was kind of nice to just honor what Dustin built. I mean, it's a small little town and uh, everybody knows him. So uh, I, I played. Can I that. ask you something totally inappropriate? Of course. I wouldn't expect anything less. Is this lady go to your gym right here in the white top? No. Oh, shit. Okay. I was going to be like, God, what a fucking specimen. <laughs> That's the kind of person, like when you look like that everywhere you go, someone's staring at you. Yeah, I'm a little behind on swapping out because when we built the website, we were yeah. we didn't have any pictures yet. So I'm I'm a little behind. 
All right, fair enough, fair enough. I know, I yeah. knew it was, I knew it was, I knew it was inappropriate for several reasons. It was going to put you on the spot. Um, not inappropriate for the reasons that some people think. God forbid you admire uh, someone else's beauty while you're here on planet Earth. Um, hey, uh, how how many level ones have been done there? Uh, at this gym, we've done, I believe, two. Our most recent one, we had an L two here, which was uh, amazing. Um, and I got to just be a fly on the wall for that. Uh, I cannot wait to take that one myself. Um, and then at my old gym up in Path Robles, we had a couple of L ones over there. Uh, when did you take your L one? Do you remember? Uh, I took my. I've done it twice. Most recently in eight nineteen or eighteen at the ranch, and then I think it was in two thousand fourteen at um, NorCal CrossFit. Are, oh, wow. 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 Are, are there still spaces available at the one that's ha- what's the date on the one that you're doing? That is September 18th. Is that what I saw? I believe it was the 16th. If I, if I have that right, I should know, shouldn't I? Uh, well, you're doing a lot of things when you're in a CrossFit gym. I'm going to give you uh, hey. what do they call it? Biblically, it's called grace or something like that. Okay. Uh, hold on. I got it too. Uh, uh, September 16th and 17th. Correct. You Tascadero. got it. Okay. Yeah, 16th and 17th. Yeah, there are still some spots available. We just had one of our um, uh, teenage members snag up a spot last night. And um, he came to me and, and said, how do I pitch this to my dad? We've already paid for it. Um. It was, pre- it was pretty cool. So his, he's doing it with his mom. His mom was one of the spots I, 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 I got her in, and then he wanted to do it with her. So he snagged up a spot. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, probably most of you already know, and I speak in no hyperbole, when you take the level one, it, there will be gifts in there that you will carry your whole life. And you think, oh, so what? Well, I, I ask you, how often does that happen at any time in your life that something happens where you carry it your whole life? Not only will it benefit you your entire life until the second you're dead, but people around you. There are so many gems in there. This isn't a sales pitch. It's not an exaggeration. I'm telling you there's things you're going to learn in there no matter how advanced you are in CrossFit that you will take with you your entire life that will make your life better. It is – no, no, uh, no uh, not herpes. Solid guess – um, uh, but on the other end of the scale, <laughs> um, but thank you, Dick. No, it won't be, uh, you won't get herpes. Appreciate you uh, for any confusion. Cause it's a kind of a dumb world we live in, Mike. So people say some crazy shit. Yeah. They think it's about like, well, I need to do this so I can coach. And I'm like, nah, if you're, if you're into CrossFit, if you're into just living healthy, this weekend will kind of blow your mind. And, and I, you know, I, to think that I get to participate in every single one that we've done here. I've really done it, you know, five or six times, except I'm not on the floor, but I sit and I watch. I don't, you know, open the door and then leave. I sit there and I watch every single time and just pay attention You get new stuff out of it. And it's equally as mind blowing the last time that was the first time. You bring up a great point. The reason why people think that it is to coach is this. The information in there is so good and so life-changing that you won't be able to stop talking about it. It's like those people who just found God, right, or they just found veganism. Like they're so excited about what they found that changed their life or someone who just found the carnivore diet. They can't believe they've had peely skin their whole life. They get on the carnivore diet. They can't stop talking about it. There's stuff you're going to learn in this thing that you're you're, – I mean you're going to sound like a coach. Even if you don't want to be a coach, you're going to start sounding like a coach, right? Be a little bit of a know-it-all with some good shit. Yeah. I remember when we it, it, at NorCal CrossFit back in the day, we break into the little groups and Kalipa was running our little circle and you know, it was the first day and he's like, okay, raise your hand. If you guys are excited to coach. And I, I'm the, I was the only one who didn't raise my hand. I'm like, I'm just here for fun. And then, you know, here's where it, where it took me, but uh, I wasn't there to be a coach at that time. Uh, Lick, Seb, I'm talking uh, a lot about God recently. Hey, dude, my whole point in life is uh, I, in the esoteric realm is to figure out where I was before I was born and where I go after I die. And while I'm here, my kids are my legacy. That's it. 
So what do you mean just started? But I appreciate you, Licks, giving me an opportunity to address that. Um, uh, completely, uh, I, I see how this is related to the conversation, Ken. Every time I've gotten an MRI, they've said they would put music in the headphones and never do. Seems intentional. I'm telling you that Mike and I are not lying to you like the people who do the MRI. You will walk away with gems at the L1 that you will take your whole life. Fuck those people who do the MRI, right? Right, Mike? This is a different right. thing. This is no MRI. This is you're very gonna, different. You're going to get uh, bits of wisdom in your earphones. They don't treat you like they do at the hospital at the L1. And 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 Mike, um, how you and I each get ten percent of all the L one sales for this gym? That you is, and I, you and I take a fact. That is not correct. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is not correct. As a um, as are you the so you're the owner of the affiliate or the owner of the building or both? Uh, the owner of the affiliate. As the owner of the affiliate, why would you want um people in your community to take the L one? Because they just, it, it's that hook in them. It gets them more, even more motivated than they were before. And they start making different choices, you know, throughout their life, right? They, you go to an L1, you're just going to eat better. You're going to work out harder. You're going to show up. It just kind of spills into to everything because it's all interlocked. It's just, you know, the, what CrossFit does is cures the, what was that, the, Here's the world's most vexing problem. Well, the L1 just gives you more tools and more information to be able to do that. And then that just spreads through the community. The more people that come here that do the L1 are just going to talk to other people and it just becomes infectious. And then all of a sudden we got some really beautiful looking people running around, you know, that you could appreciate. Uh, they, you would go to the uh, CrossFit.com, click on seminars. Um, it is the... It is the level one that's on September 16th and 17th. It's directly in the middle of uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco. Uh, hotels there are very affordable uh, relative to the rest of the state. It is a beautiful area. Like he said, it's in wine country, and, um, and, you, and you won't be disappointed. And, and Mike, I got to have you back on. I'd love to know all about your affiliate and the history of your affiliate. It sounds fascinating, and you come from an amazing pedigree. Uh, I love Virgil's an amazing dude. Right on. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. All right, brother. Uh, keep me posted, and um, I'll be in touch. And I can't wait to hear about how the uh, the level one went. And if any of the participants who took it um, want to come on and talk to me about it, it's 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 a passion of mine. I think it's the best two days. You, you know, it's up there in the best two days you could of anything you could do with your life for sure. And and I mean that. I don't say that lightly. I totally agree. Totally agree. All right, dude. Have a good day. Thanks for coming on right. and uh, and and helping me uh, spread the good word. You got it. Thanks, Ivan. Peace. Atascadero CrossFit, September 16th, 17th, middle of California. Never done one of those. I just ran into this guy on Instagram. We're talking, and he's like, hey, we're doing an L1 at my um, gym. I have someone else coming on here in a second. Also in the CrossFit space, this fucking CrossFit space. Don't tell me, don't tell me. Jay, are you are you Armenian? Is there a call you Armenian? Don't tell me, Mister Hartle, that there's a different convo convo in the chat. It is not convo. It is not a different convo. I can make the connections. I know. I know. I know. I don't think Tank. I don't think. I don't think Tank. It's a big deal that he was a uh, pharma guy. I don't think it's a big deal that he took Soros money. Yes, Sevi, I'm Armenian. Okay, good. Does your next guest look like Millie Vanilli? Uh, similar hair. Uh, way more attractive. Way fitter. Uh, maybe one of the most attractive human beings that's ever walked the planet. Uh, definitely in the top, you know, in that top 1% of 1%. You guys will be excited. You want to guess who it is? Townsend, good guess, good guess. Good guess. Complete opposite uh, skin complexion. This 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 person's translucent, but uh, but but same beautiful like uh, um, like Mr. Townsend for sure. C crazy hair like uh, Mr. Townsend. Body that looks like looks like something. Looks like peptides. Yeah, I said it. I said it, James. 
James Newberry, no. Another great guess. Uh, I think this person washes their hair. But but uh, uh, we shall see. Oh, where, 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 uh, do you want to know if it's a boy or a girl? Oh, let me see. Okay. Uh, I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Oh, anyone want to guess? Uh, Sporty Beth, no, good guess. Anyone else want to guess? Con Porter. Uh, Con doesn't have as good a hair as this guest. Anyone else? Craig Ritchie. Nope. Nope. Uh, anyone else? Either J.R. Howell or the Dave Castro. The Dave Castro is a good guest. He has great hair. Shelby Neal. Woo! Okay, here we go. Hi. Hello. Miss YouTube. <laughs> miss YouTube, that's true. No, I didn't say I miss you, but I do miss you. I said YouTube, but no, I love it. YouTube, I love right? it that you thought I said miss you. No, I thought you said miss YouTube. Oh, oh, oh yeah, miss, miss YouTube. Universe. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, you okay. I um, thought you were saying but I miss, miss you. you like, too, so, um, uh, I miss you too. It's okay. <laughs> I I I saw um Sarah recently in a power meeting. I was at a restaurant and I was spying <laughs> on her. And she was in a very uh, high level meeting, I could tell, with some very high level people. And I took a picture of her. And it I was the it... most creepy picture I've ever received. And I sent Girl. it to her and she said, Why didn't you visit? And I said, I was yeah. too shy. I was too shy. You should never be shy, Simon. Never. You just shy. didn't want to interrupt. You're so respectful, you know? Thank you. And it was a long walk. I'd already done my workout for the day. Yeah. I had to go down those it's stairs. A lot of steps and... there. Yeah, exactly. What would I type in? What is your YouTube station? How do I find this new YouTube station? So you type in Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Okay. Simple as that. And then I've already put up uh, four episodes. Oh, so, do you know how cool? I'm going to tell you how cool I am. I typed in Sarah Sigmund's daughter and the um, podcast I did with you a month ago came up. God, I feel so good. Oh, do you know what came up and I typed it in? The what? podcast we did when I was in Dubai with the caption, are you a lesbian? <laughs> oh, have have you seen the comments on that? No, I haven't. Do I want to see them? I just, it, it just people just get offended so easy. Yeah. They think it's, they think it's inappropriate. I think, I think no, relationship talk question. is, yeah. yeah, I think relationships are, oh my God, you already have four videos on your YouTube. Yeah. We've been working, you know. Um, why did you wait so long to do a um a YouTube station? Well, great, it's great header photo, by the way. Awesome header photo. It's uh, Red Rocks. It's so cool. Um, yeah. Why did I start so late? I mean, it's one of those things that you just procrastinate. You know, it's never the right time to start. <laughs> That's how it was for me. I was just like, oh, yeah, I'll, this year I'll start. Like, I've been wanting to do YouTube probably since 2019. And then it's just always been, oh, next year I'll start. Oh, this story isn't kind of, or like the the build up to uh, this season, it's, it's not the right time now. I'm going through this and this. So, like, like this year I just started. <laughs> it's just like, it's never going to be the perfect time of starting it. And yeah, so just took the bandaid off and made it public, you know? Uh, we've been um, recording for a while, so it's going to be a lot of like stuff. The, <laughs> I, I said I was too shy to come down and visit you. Is any part of it that you were too, that, that, like, that you didn't start it because maybe you were shy? You were, or you didn't, was there anything like that? Or was it just um, hours in the day or? I think it's mostly just hours in the day. And you also think, oh, like, why would people want to see anything of what I'm doing? Like, my life. Yeah, that's so what I kind of think. Why would she yeah. want me to come down there and interrupt her? <laughs> that would that would probably yeah. be it more than being shy. Just kind of low self-esteem. I don't know if low yeah, self-esteem is the right word, but Sarah's, a, why, why would I bug her? Yeah, why would I ever want, like, why would people, like, subscribe on my YouTube channel? There's nothing interesting. Like, you just go straight there, but then. Yeah. You, you also, if if I would think of, like, my favorite athlete, like, Kobe Bryant, like, I've probably watched all his videos so many times, just put it on when I'm cleaning at home, just listening to it, 
and maybe I'm one of those athletes for some people in CrossFit and I'm like if I can help them and give them inspiration on how my life actually is and what's going on behind the scenes and it's just like giving people a little bit of an insight of how I actually am as a person um like it's it's way more personal than your Instagram profile or something like that like you actually see the people that I'm around you see what, how I am when I'm traveling you see when I'm stressed like you can see all the all the things that you sometimes don't don't want to show the world but it's very important to show the world to actually show that you're human um what what won't you show um people like um l- let's just go straight there what about like relationships so yeah, I mean, it- those are very like personal and i think that what the youtube will do is that it's going to open up a lot of things that i maybe haven't shared before right so- relationships are are so interesting in this era right so we we know people who um have uh, well i'll just pick this person in, because i had him on the show but like james newberry a high profile australian athlete he had a girlfriend they were um when i had him on the show i was going through his instagram and he had a post on there that he um separated from yeah. his from his girlfriend and then i started thinking sometimes when i dig back in people's profiles i see that they have like x's in there you know what i yeah. mean yeah. and like i don't know what the conventional wisdom or protocol is on that because especially someone as high profile as you, it kind of twists them up into your life. And yeah. it, it, it may not even be that you want to keep it private or that it's too personal. It's just that it could be a distraction from yeah. um, from your true core message, right? Uh, like, and pe- people are also very keen on judging right away of like, oh, Sarah's with this guy. Oh, my gosh. This, this, like lucky you. him. Lucky yeah, him. Lucky him. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, it's just, like, there's a lot of, um, a lot of, and also, like, you have to be quite sure that you're committed. That's at least for me to be able to post about it. And, like, it is a serious thing, and that's why I want the world to know if it's nothing that's going to be, like, like, you don't want to have something public unless it's going to last. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have three different boyfriends on my Instagram from the last four years. Like, right, right. it needs to be something that's that's uh, that's the final destination. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's how I look at it. It's like it's it needs to be that personal. But that's that's more of just like how much personal life will you share? And I think that's a challenge for me. It's like I'm I maybe not a shy person. But I'm I'm a little bit of a private person also. Like I love to keep my private things to myself and the world doesn't quite know everything about me. But I still want to be a inspiration for for people that look up to me and I want them to see actually who the real me is and and how how human and how clumsy I am and everything like that. So it's good for people to see a little bit of the private life, but then you also have to keep it balanced so you don't get lost in the and sharing too many things, I think. Um, your journey um, to go to the CrossFit Games, yeah. I think it, I, I, I think um, Dave said it to me first, and then um, the first time I ever heard it was from Dave, and then I heard it again from Andrew Hiller in a separate talk that one of the pieces that about CrossFit and I'm, I'm putting my spin on it that people don't talk about is how vulnerable. The reason why people don't like it is because of how vulnerable it makes you. So yeah. like uh, you see these bodybuilders and they'll be like, CrossFit stupid. And like when you dig into it, it's probably just because it makes you so vulnerable. Yeah. Right. And so um, on so many levels in the immediate, because you could never, you couldn't at the end of a workout, you couldn't defend yourself from a, a kitten. Mm-hmm. Um, but but also because the whole world's th- one of the goals is is in our sport is to go to failure. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and flirt with that. So yeah, ahead. you're also um, like I don't know if composed is the right word, but like you you have these challenges that you have no idea if you can face them or not. Like like showing up at the Crossy Games and you get a pack board and you're like, I have to climb that in front of everybody here. On live camera, what if I fail? What if this? What if people see this side of me? 
and then that maybe happens how do you deal with that afterwards of not judging yourself from what the criteria is judging you from so i think that's the biggest challenge with crossfit it's just like you have to put your ego to the side and you sometimes have to start from step one to be able to go to step four and that's like when i started crossfit i could not kick up against the wall to do a handstand hold it was my biggest mm. fear i was like wow. yeah if i go on my hands i'm gonna fall on my neck and i'm gonna break my neck like so really had, you didn't you didn't go upside down in the beginning no, that didn't come easy I, or natural for you wow no, interesting. i wow. was terrified and then <laughs> Finally, when I kicked up, I kicked up to a wall that was like a very thin wall and I broke it. And I was like, <laughs> so it didn't start very well. But like, that's, that's the beauty of CrossFit. Now I'm walking over handstand ramps and I'm walking over stairs. And it's just like, you, you have to just put your ego to the side and you have to learn it like a, like a little kid that just started gymnastics and is learning how to like stay in, in line before running on the, and do a, a flip or whatever, like, you just have to go so far back in some areas and and people judge oh sorry can you hear me now i can i can okay sorry somebody called me girls famous you know i understand i understand <laughs> hey where are you where are you say that again sarah where are you i'm at home now yeah in 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 which country in iceland okay okay if you say home does that mean iceland yeah iceland okay. is always home in heart okay okay so so uh b going back to the upside down thing yeah there are a lot of um there are a lot of journeys on the road to the crossfit games that are captured right yeah is there is have you watched those or is there anything that you would you think about that you're like um that you'd like to share about that journey you, i thought you were about to say something and maybe you were along the lines of you're gonna start this journey and there's a chance you might not make it right only 40 yeah. girls around the world get to go and that's I another mean, crazy vulnerable part too especially like if oh, you you're not gonna yeah. wait till the end to put it out so people are there's this emin, eminent failure or success on the horizon no matter what yeah I mean, how I look at this YouTube channel now is just like, okay, but I was this uh, success, successful CrossFitter that made it almost to the top of winning the CrossFit Games a few times. Like, and I did some off-season competitions, like me and Tia were head to head at Rogue at, like it was just, there was a lot of things and I was just there, like at the top. Then I get an injury and I go all the way down and I'm still fighting my way back. And it's been like when I tore my ACL, I was like, I'll give myself six months here. I'll, I'll uh, ask Dave if I can be on the demo team here in August when I tore my ACL in March. Like I was that optimistic that it would not be as much of a struggle as people had told me. I was just like, you don't know my mindset or anything, but it's it has changed so many things my perspective on how thankful i was to be at the top and how good i actually was i never appreciated myself there at the top like i didn't know how good i was until i wasn't that good anymore and now the constant struggle for three years of just like i'm on my way up again this happens oh i'm back down how do i mentally react to this and this is what like i look at sports of like sports teach you so much with life of like when you experience a uh, loss like if if you lose somebody that you're close to that you love you go through all these stages of grief anger sadness this is the exact same thing you go through in disappointment in sports so sport is actually preparing you for life that's how i look at it and i look at this of like if i give up after after an injury because it's very easy to just say, okay, I've tried here for these this long time and it's not happening. Like, it's so easy to just put my shoes on the side and be like, hey, I'm done here. I made it to the top. I'm never coming back. Like, the, the, my heart says, like, you have so much more and have so many times always almost reached the top again and then something small happens again. So that's why I thought with a YouTube channel of, like, 
I actually want to show people that like, I want them to be with me in this journey because the moment I experienced that semifinals was insane. Like I was struggling with the legless. I hear a click in my forearm. I'm in front of like, it's, it's an every athlete's phobia probably to experience what I experienced. I was just like, I couldn't perform in stuff that I was good at. And it was just like, what is going on here? And like the love and just like the energy in the arena of like, always when I tried, the crowd just went crazy. And I yeah. remember I was I was climbing up and I was getting goosebumps and almost like emotionally crying because I was just, there was so much emotion and there was so much power from all the people of just like, they really wanted me to, to succeed. And that's what I thought was like, this is the perfect time of the YouTube channel now because people are actually just, they show so much love and support and they need to see what's going on behind the scenes to actually like experience it. This, uh, this video is crazy. Yeah. Um, per particularly. I like, um, watching your fingers on the rope. Yeah. It, it's who shot this by the way. Do you know? Oh, yeah. video. He's there. Video Luke Ebron. Oh yeah. The close-ups of your fingers on the rope are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Because when I see your fingers, I I start to I, I I start to have a visceral feeling like, oh my god, are her fingers gonna break? Like, yeah, yeah, it, that's crazy. It's what a great also, shot he got. Yeah, it, it's also just insane of seeing like there was just no strength in the left arm. I just as soon as the left arm was supposed to hold something, it just didn't and just slipped down like that. Um. Yeah, the slipping's crazy too. Yeah. Right? So it's oh my goodness. Yeah. Hey, did it you was, get a rope burn from that, Sarah? No, I didn't actually. <laughs> or not that like I was just so frustrated and angry from not having the like ability to climb that <laughs> that rope. So I didn't feel that much except for that click. So but yeah. Um uh, Jake Chapman has a question. Are you going to do a video about the most toxic man in CrossFit? Good job, Jake. Uh who is the most toxic man in CrossFit? That's the big question. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody okay. knows. <laughs> what about, what about, um, uh, for your YouTube channel? I'm just now, uh, let me, hold on. Let me take us off the air. Okay. We're off the air. No one's watching now. And I just want to spitball some ideas. Okay. It's just me and you. Yeah. Um, what about doing shorts? So like, um, you can do shorts from your phone, just one minute videos. Yeah. And we'll I do already, a little. Yeah. I already did three today. You did? Yes. Did you post them? Yeah, I just posted them this morning. Uh, did you schedule them or you actually posted them? No, I posted them. Oh, I see it. Yes. I see it. Okay, let me. So, so these have to be under a minute long. Yeah. Okay, so here I have some. I, I'm just gonna ask you some questions. I, I just yeah. made these up just now while you were talking. I just thought, okay, and we'll and see if you can get them in under like sixty seconds. They're just rehearsals. Okay. Okay, but then okay. you could use them later and just give me ten percent of the earnings from the um, from the short. Okay, you get fifteen. Go. Um, what is something that you've learned in your um, last intimate relationship? Uh, uh, you know, whether it be something you learned going into it, when you left it, in the middle of it, but a, a component to a successful intimate relationship. I should have replied to this under sixty seconds. Um, no, no, you have you. Oh, that was too much pressure. You can, you can. <laughs> No 60 seconds. But the final has to be 60 seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll give you another one. You don't even have to answer that one. You can, though, if, if it comes back up. Here's another one. Um, when you're hungry at night, what do you – and you're not supposed to eat. Like last night I ate way too many pistachios. I mean before I went to bed. What is the um, – what is like something you can tell yourself so that you can just make it to bed without eating like, you, you know, uh, three pounds of pistachios? I mean, I have, like, I love eating before bed. So I actually always make like a bowl. I call it like a Sarah bowl. So because I would love cereal. So I made just, I cut fruit and put like protein over the fruit and eat it mm. like a cereal with peanut butter on. Okay. So you yes. don't, don't, so, so not the answer I was thinking, don't deny yourself, uh, use peanut butter. Okay. Yes, um, exactly. <laughs> do you, is it, is it, do you ever go to bed with wet hair? Is that a bad yeah, idea? You, yeah, but I would never um, go in public after that night without looking in the mirror, you know? 
it's an it's a little bit of an after all. <laughs> so so you would go to bed with wet hair, but there's consequences yeah. to pay in the morning. There there are big consequences. I call okay. it the lion east. Okay. Here's another one. If you feel an itchy throat coming on, what what are uh, what do you do? I don't even care if it's right or wrong to t- immediately take precautions and address it. You know, like uh oh, I have a cold coming on. Yeah. Say it again. Turmeric, ginger, and garlic, all mixed in one shot, and drink okay. loads of water. Um, and then another short. These are all just short ideas, right? Yeah. For a little sixty yeah. seconds. Uh, uh, you've traveled as much as anybody. Yeah. What is uh, w- uh some some mistakes you've made that you don't make anymore, and that you continue to make that you need to to stop? Oh, uh, with traveling, I'm mm. always late. Mm. So, like my to the airport, is, you're late to yeah. the airport. Yeah. Oh, always. you're stressing me out. Oh, you're stressing me. Oh out. my gosh. Like I, I'm so lucky all the time though. So I showed up. This is a great story, and it's way longer than sixty seconds. But I feel okay. like I need to share it with you. Please, thank you. <laughs> so, I show up. This is the record of showing up late to the airport. It's thirty-five minutes before departure. Snor is already at the airport, so I have this uh, trip to London for wit. Which you're supposed and, to three hours, three hours ahead of time for international. Yeah, but it's Iceland, and I used to work there, and it's it's 15 minutes from where I live, and it's just like, <laughs> you know, girl needs to train and everything before. So, uh, yeah, so I show up in the airport, and I am actually going to Dubai after London. So I'm starting in London, so I have loads of stuff with me. I go up to the check-in desk, and the girl's like, are you going to London? I was like, yeah. And she's like, I'm not sure if the plane or like that, I can still board you. I was like, yeah, I worked here. It's 30 minutes before. And I had no idea if it was true or not. She's like, oh, okay. So she boarded me. And I was like, okay. Ran to the security, go to security, forget to get, take my computer out. So I have to go back again, run to the gate, snores at the gate. And I was like, I made it. Oh, that is great. And I had this feeling inside me. I was like, why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? So oh, no. it. Yeah, so it's an outdoor gate, and I go uh, to the bus, to the aircraft, and then I realized, I was like, oh, my bag isn't that heavy, like, my, like, hand luggage isn't that heavy anymore, that means that my computer isn't here anymore, so I forget my computer, <laughs> walk up to the airplane, and see the, the stewardess, and I was like, uh, do you have, like, a walkie-talkie, because when I used to work here, like, you had a walkie-talkie from the girls that used to work in check-in and to the like the air traffic control to the um, like the luggage guys and everything. So she's like, "No, I don't have any sorts of things like that. You can please just have a seat." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I forgot my computer at security." And and uh, are you sweaty at this point? Are you sweating? I- I'm not only sweating, Snorri is also sweating. Because oh, okay. <laughs> we were just like, holy hell, because I was in school at that time, and I was like, I need everything that's in the computer. And she's like, you just have to sort this out later. And I was like, that's not good enough. So I stand up, uh, I call the security from my phone, and I was like, I forgot my computer. Is there any possibility that somebody could run with a computer to the gates? And the guy there is like, yep, I'll send one. And I was like, okay, thank you. Uh, then I was like, how can I let the girl at the gate know that the computer is coming before she comes to the aircraft? So I see the cockpit and I was like, I might as well try. So I just go <laughs> knock, to, knock in the cockpit, ask the pilot if he could actually uh, like, because they have like the, the, the line, like the phone line to the, <laughs> yeah, to the yeah. uh, checking girl. He lets her know and she brings the computer. <laughs> And I got my computer. This was when all your computer, in a 35 minute time cap. <laughs> when your computer showed up, were, was everyone already sitting down? Everybody was already sat down, but the girl was. Plane was boarded. Plane loads. was boarded. No, the plane was boarded, but it was not delayed because of me. <laughs> crazy. It's hey, crazy. That, have you ever thought about going an hour early and just like chilling? I've often thought about it, but you know, it never happens. I I'm always on time in America <laughs> to the airport oh. there, but that's because of like there are no chances there. But More in Iceland, there. I live on the edge, you know. One time, one time uh, I was going through TSA, and the lady said something about um, 
she, as I pulled up, I, I went to hand her my driver's license or something. I handed her the wrong thing. And she said, you, why aren't you ready? And she started yelling at me. I'm like, ma'am, I'm trying. She goes, you stand here and wait here. And then she made me stand there and wait there at the, you know, where they check your ID. Yeah. For like to punish me for like five minutes. Yeah. To make yeah. you just feel horrendous. And then she didn't make eye contact. With no, you no. Time. Even though the, they're waiting. And I'm just like, I treated me like I was a four year old. It was crazy. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is nuts. I feel ashamed. Yeah. Yeah. God, it's so it's it's. um. Yeah. I like I to get there. Better. I like to get there early and sort of yeah. observe the people who are panicking. Yeah, I actually enjoy that a lot too. But <laughs> it, you know, when you work for uh, like a couple, like I worked for Iceland there before, and you know the rules and stuff and how it works. It's like yeah, you're like oh, they're just in the process of this. It's still about thirty minutes until we go through that. And so, like, I think it's a flaw or a curse that I actually know it because that makes me live extra much on the edge. You know, right. Um. Well, I'm excited to see your um, YouTube channel. Yeah, what do grow. you want to see on the YouTube channel? That's the big question. I I personally um, think you should do make yourself do a short every day that shares okay. some sort of lesson from you that you've learned. You one know what lesson, I mean? One yeah. lesson a day of the shorts. Okay. Yeah, it, you know something like, hey, before you get into a relationship, you know it's really important to know like what time if you're a professional athlete, what time people go to bed. Yeah. Or um, n never, um, never guilt trip someone who's. These are reasons why you should never guilt trip on someone why who who has uh, really focused aspirations. You'll lose them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or it's hey, the of the day. The, I don't know why I keep showing up late to the airport, but my, I'm telling you, my life would be better if I always showed up a half hour early. <laughs> yeah. Um, my heart rate would be better. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, every time I feel like my throat's getting itchy, I take, start taking 2000 milligrams of vitamin C every hour for 12 hours yeah. and it's 99%. Yeah. I think people would just want to yeah. hear from you. I have a great um, one also. Tell me, tell me. Love is life. Life is love. That's yes. A, that's a deep one. That's yes. my key saying of the day. Yes. Hey, <laughs> um, I was talking about this the other day along that line. Love is life. Life is love. Um, it's that second one that I think is really important that people forget life is love. Um, yeah. Gandhi said something like you can't separate um, religion and state because your life, your existence, how I treat Sarah is, is my religion. How mm -hmm. I interact with the world, how I treat yeah. bugs, how I look at the ocean. It's all my minute, second to second, uh, moment to moment interaction with the world is my religion. So what you're saying is, is like – Love isn't something you turn on and off. No, you're saying you're saying love. life is yeah, love. Like this is life like Bob Marley is, would yeah. say, heaven on earth. Yes. Yeah. Did, did you watch the intro? Or at least the opportunity is there. The opportunity yeah. is there. Have you transmuted? I don't know if that's a word. Your love into anger and hate and frustration. Like, why are you spending yeah. it like that? Why not just let it just be always love? Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's why my YouTube channel is called Thirty Four O Seven. Oh, did you watch why it is 3407? No, but I, I watched the video to where you took it to where you were about to say why it is, and then the video cut off. Yeah, you need to watch the full video. It's uh, there's a story behind it. Okay, don't tell me now. Uh, no, you hold need on. To watch it. Yeah, hold on. It's, it's almost in the end of the YouTube video. Wh which, which one in it? Which one uh, is it? You had me at hello. hello. Yeah, you oh. had me at hello. Did you, did you notice that all the names of the episodes? are names of songs that fit with what's in the video. It's just deep thoughts here. Oh, I yeah. haven't noticed that. No. Now you're going to get extra excited for each episode. Um, I, I even think some, um, um, some, maybe some like superficial love stuff, like, or, or, or uh, um, I, I was going to say what, what I find uh, most attractive in a, a mate, but it could also be a, how to pick a dog, how to how pick do a pet. How, How to, to pick, pick a dog. dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just some um, life lessons and wisdoms. Yeah, yeah. I think I can do that. I had this um I had this guy on who was a, a a fighter, um, Sarah, real alpha guy. And um I was saying something like, Hey, how do you stay focused and then um and not get distracted by like wanting to chase girls? Yeah. And he said something like, Hey, when you're a man like me, like alpha men don't chase um women. 
that that's not we, we, we don't do that and i was just like i never like i'm 50 years old i'd never heard something like that i wasted like 20 years of my life chasing girls and when he said that i was like how the fuck does this 25 year old guy know this yeah exactly that's and there, a- there are some gems in there there's things like that the people like you know that you take for granted yeah. Um. And, and I keep harping on relationships because that's how we're all – I like relationships, and, and that's how we're all created. Yeah. Uh, this union of these two creatures coming together yeah. and then and then and then hopefully making a love child and then and then yeah. you know the spawn. So I, I, I just that. yeah. So I just like I just like that topic. Yeah, I love it too. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank hey, you. Huh? This the the uh I, I'm gonna have to start a whole clean slate of judging you. Why? Because I had you in this category. <laughs> in this, it was like you and Daniel Brandon in this category of impossible to schedule. And now you just fell out. You're like, I text you last night and I'm like, you want to come yeah. on in the morning? Just a Hail Mary, just a throw into yeah. the end zone. But I mean, you after the last chat, you became high on my priority list. So like like I get oh, extra shit. notification if you message me. Yeah, you're one of them now. So Thank you, dear. You're always welcome. Congratulations on the YouTube channel. Um, and uh, and I look forward to crossing paths with you again. Pass, Thank pass, you. paths, paths with you pass. again. Yes. Thank you so much, Ivan. Bye. Bye. Dang. Sevi needs a cigarette. <laughs> oh, my God. Jessica Valenzuela, love you, love Sarah. Hey, I heard, I saw your comment, Jessica, about how you have to retire the uh, CEO shirt because, um, because um, you got Sarah's uh, autograph on it. I don't know if I approve of that. I should have asked her. Uh, yeah, Sarah's so fucking awesome. I should have asked her if she was wearing uh, toe spacers. Damn, I hate it when I'm trying to click something and something else pops up. Vindicate new shirts at Vindicate. Kind of, a, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit embarrassed by them. Uh, having my face on a shirt is, um, um, uh, unsettling. Look at as soon as I type in Instagram, it goes to Vivek Maswami. Vindicate. I'm gonna try to get Dreamwear on next week. I don't know, he's been on before, but I think he's he's kind of bummed about uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. Yeah, th- but I, I'm not gonna lie. As much as I'm a little embarrassed about my face being on a shirt, I this shirt uh, tickles my fancy. Maybe I'm just maybe I am a world class egomaniac narcissist. But he who must not be named. It's pretty funny. Remember when they were doing the um, uh, uh, Wooly and Gang were doing the. Um, we said they were in cahoots, so they kind of ran with the cahoots thing, which which I, I like. Uh, this is kind of the same thing. He who shall not be named. This is like, I, I think, I haven't even talked to Travis. I should call Travis. Find out if that if it's because no one will say my name. Like the other day, Wooly called me a, a D-bag, but won't say my name. Let me see if I can call Travis. Let me see if he's um, T-R-V-I-S. Travis, where is that? I can't have your phone number in here. It's all just Travis Bajans. Oh, do you think I have you in my phone as Vindicate? V N D. Oh, I should put the phone number. Travis, if you're listening, could you call me? What the fuck is going on? How come I don't have your number? How do I get money from you when we when I sell shirts if I don't have your number? Travis. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. I got your number. Don't call me. I'll call you. Don't don't call me. I'll call you. Here we go. 402. Just kidding. 880. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Chill. Everyone chill. I'm giving this number out. Can you call me? Of course you can. Hey, is this... um? <laughs> Is this because, like, whenever like someone talks shit about me, they won't say my name? Yeah, you oh, know the people. Yeah. we won't say yeah. he, she, their, well, they, them's names. But I, yeah, it's cool. It's it's so cool. I mean, it, it, hey, I'm it, in full cahoots with you. We are completely in cahoots. Yes, 
You said that you're embarrassed. You're not going to be sad when I send you a check. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Look, twelve hundred dollars. I'm so embarrassed. There you go. No, nope, people love them. Hey, the blues dope. Well. The blues dope. Yeah, I was. That was kind of a last minute. I was like, oh, I'm going to try this color and see how it does. Oh my God, the white is nice too. Off white. Not white, white, off white. Hey, and those glasses. Hey, you could do something total blasphemous and put a um um uh a crown of thorns around my head. <laughs> oh my is oh my oh look at this. I don't salmon. even remember salmon. I don't even know where you were at in that picture. I just grabbed it off of Google. You're wearing like a tie. You're at like a formal Yeah. Event. I went to a um I went to a it's a Christmas dinner at CrossFit. And I would okay. never wear those gla- like I would n- I, like I would never wear something like that or a suit or put goo in my hair. And for that, I for some reason, I just wanted to go there just like to- like totally absurd to a Christmas dinner. And I went there like that. Like call, call the kids say you had some drip in that photo. Hey, you were, you were very swaggy. Um, do you want to be part of a panel discussion really quick? Sure. OK. okay um, what are we talking about? Um, I, I don't, I'm going to surprise you with it. Like when is this? It, it would just be right now. It would be just really quick. Oh, okay. 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 Hold on. Let me, I'm going to, um, I'm going to see if I can get, um, I wonder if I can get Hiller on too. And then you guys. Oh, good luck. Oh, your, your calls might actually go through. Um, yeah, he, I, he lets me break through his, uh, okay, hold on. I'm do gonna... I need to, uh, do I need to look at my YouTube? No, no. I'm going to send okay. you a, um, are you on your phone? Yeah, but I have my computer up also. I just okay. got to turn my YouTube off. Okay. So it's not uh, echoing. I'm going to send you a link right now. Okay. Okay. And then uh, go ahead and come on and then uh, we'll, you'll be part of the panel discussion. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. I'm going to show them my hogs and have them rate it on a one to 10. That's exactly, um, standby. Uh, no, um, there is this post I made yesterday uh, that I that I didn't I did this is I think this is a fascinating conversation. I was trying to figure out. Um, uh, oh, you okay? Fine, fine. You went fine. Okay, fine. Fuck it. Where's Heidi? Uh, you want, Heidi wants to be part of the panel discussion too. That that's four. That's good. That's four is good. Now we have four squares. Oh, and you've got a girl on. How cool. Oh, my God, you have a girl. Heidi, how come I can't find your phone number on my computer? Maybe it's only in my phone. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, I guess Heidi. No, I, no, I text with you here. Okay, here we go. Hey, um, not that you're not like pretty on the internet, but you're one of those few people that actually like uh, shows up. Like you're you're actually maybe even more attractive in person. So congratulations. You know how like most people you're like, oh, that's what you look like. So you um, good job. Okay. Uh, uh, I, um, so we have uh, Travis uh, Bellinghausen from Vindicate coming on. We have uh, Heidi Heidi Kroom. I know, there's no way I said Travis's name right, right? And uh, and maybe Andrew Hiller. Maybe I should call Andrew and let him know that he's part of a panel discussion. Okay, there's uh, there's Travis. We got one. Hi. Uh, can you click the link and come on for a few minutes for part of a, a panel discussion? Can you give me five minutes? No. Can you give me three minutes? Sure. Cool. All right, three minutes. Bye. <laughs> Probably taking his wife to the uh, to the bathroom. He's gonna. He, I think he's gonna miss the the discussion. What's up, dude? How are you? Um. Well, I gotta figure out. I gotta turn the show off. There we go. You have no echo, and your picture looks great. You look great. It's my fancy lighting. Yeah, you look great. Okay, let me pull up this. Should I be um, nervous? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. There'll be no penises shown in this. Uh, this, um, as long as it's not mine, I don't care. Uh, fine, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Paper street coffee. That's, a, that's how I feel about penises too. That is, yeah. 
You know, you know how I know I'm. Uh, 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 I have a little gay in me is because I love my own penis. I just love it. Hi, oh, Heidi. Shit, we got Heidi. Hi. What's up, girl? Where, where you look like? What are you at the city college uh, taking fucking classes? You look like you're at the city college. Where are you? <laughs> that works. She's at the courthouse. Oh, yeah. Okay. That... Nah, nah, nah. J <laughs> I like that. City college or the courthouse? No one, no one went with job. I no. um I posted this picture yesterday and it's um of me and oh, uh, Philip Kelly. I went out drinking with Philip Kelly yesterday. Got sauced in the morning. <sighs> sauced. Here, let me get a better service. And so um I posted this picture and it's Philip Kelly with his arm around Sporty Beth and then someone had photoshopped my head on it, right? My face onto it. And then, um, so someone in here said that it suggested that this was bullying. And I started thinking, when I posted it, it's supposed to be making fun of myself. And I thought, wow, what if I would have put her head on my body? Would that have been, like, which do you guys think, which one is that making fun of me? And which one is making fun of her? Like, I, that my head on her body, I think, is making fun of me because it turns me into a girl. Yeah, I think you should have put your head on her body. No, her head on your body would have been better. But that would have been bullying, is, right? No. No. Oh. The problem with okay, <laughs> so I just think. Go ahead. If we want to be sexist, I just think like from a woman's perspective, you know, she's already said that she's self-conscious about her body image. She has body image problems. And I think right. this is probably like potentially her worst nightmare where people are editing her pictures now and it could come across. I'm not saying, obviously, you know me. I, I, oh, I, I like just, this. I like I this. I don't care. But right. <laughs> I think so, from her perspective, that's kind of too far, probably. Okay. So, so let me, so let me get, uh, get this straight. So you're saying, even if I would have put any chain, any, you're saying that, it could be potentially seen as bullying any photoshopping of her picture, whether I put my head on it. Like, cause I tried to pigeonhole you. I tried to say, Hey, if you put my head on her body, would it not be bullying or my, uh, or her head on my body, the, whatever the two options are, but you're saying both of them could be construed as bullying. I think as soon as you start, uh, like editing any photo of hers, she can, she's wow. going to take it that way. God, you're really big picture. You really fucked up the panel. I didn't see this coming. No more oh. smart people. On, that's why there's no women allowed on the panel, people. <laughs> no women on the panel. Jesus Christ. Okay, Travis, please. I should have asked you first. You're far more simple. I think I think I summed it up pretty quick in my text. Okay. Oh, what, yesterday. Oh, uh, what was that? Savage. <laughs> right. Right. Isn't it funny? I knew exactly what you're talking about. But yeah. do you think that? Do you think that it would have been more or less bullying? Oh yeah, I got to come back and ask Heidi this too. Do you think it would have been more or less bullying if I would have put her head on my body? I think it would have been less if it was the opposite. Yes. I wow. With Heidi. And wow. and frankly, I, really I don't fuck, think it I would matter. Bet on this. What? Okay, you're, go on. You know, there's going to be a video made. <laughs> you like, did, I get a you video for this. Oh, you'll sure. get a video for this. 100%. I'm surprised you haven't had comments, but I haven't gone back to see what's in there. Hiller's okay. going to have a completely different take on this. He, he, oh. Hiller's going to make a fucking video about it, probably. Okay. What about the... Um, what about... The, let, let, let me take this back a step. So you think even the picture of her and Philip Kelly that I originally posted that just someone had changed her shirt to say Semonistas, how about that? Was that... Could that be construed as bullying? Listen, if you're a victim in your brain, everything is yeah. bullying. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, do you no, do you guys personally think even do you even personally think I've gone too far? Her, she thought it was bullying. Right. 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 Um, do you do you think that this is bullying? Tank Reeves called her snorty Beth instead of sporty <laughs> Beth. Do you think that that's uh, uh bullying? God damn it. <laughs> I have to or 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 responses. or do you think that that's wooling? Wow, my ooh, God, that is ooh. good, Kenneth. Holy shit! Okay, um, I don't um, think it matters what if you do anything that.
could even remotely be considered negative, it's going to, it'll cause issues. I mean, you, you got her media passes and you can't even get a thank you for that. What about the fact that she can clean and jerk twice as much as me? Does, does that make it so that because she's a better CrossFitter than me, I am allowed some leniency to uh, to, uh, to 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 play to poke fun at her? There's no leniency. Oh, no, no, no! You You're not it... allowed shit. No. <laughs> All right. What? Yeah. What about? No. What about this? Okay. Uh, so, so I'll pull that down um, right after the show. I, I, I clearly I've gone too far. It's it, you can't pull it down. Then you I know, I know. Just, then, then I'm it's joking. already out in the I'm world. Joking. Joking. It was screenshotted and recorded just like Spiegel's was after two minutes. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Uh, the panel has spoken. Um, I appreciate both of you. Uh, please go to Amazon and support uh, Heidi's uh, um, writing career. It's Heidi uh, Kroom, C-R-U-M-E. She has two children's books out. And um, go to uh, Vindicate and buy um, a bunch of T-shirts, please. They're all cool. It's all I wear. Code name Sevon. Thank you. Uh, do you have a code for discount for your books? For, uh, my name, Heidi? Uh, my code is fuck you, pay full price for my books. Yes. Okay. Fuck you. Pay full Damn price. For me. That's a long ass code. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck trying it. All right, guys. Thank you for being part of the panel. I appreciate you guys being my moral compass. Now I know. Anytime. All right. Anytime. Bye bye, bye, -bye Mr. Thank you. All right. Oh, well, shit. If, um, if, uh, I wish, um, God, I wish uh, Kayla was here so I could hear from you guys. I could do a, a vote. I seriously thought it was just I would I ser it's so funny because I, I when I do stuff like that, I kind of think like I'm building a bridge between us. You know what I mean? Like I I am a I'm a fucking idiot. I've almost be it's almost become like a challenge for me. Like, can I can I close the gap with, with her? But like there's like, I guess I fucked that up too. Excuse me. Um, I thought, oh, thank you. I thought it was making fun of you. Yeah, it was supposed to. It was supposed to be like, yeah, it's my way of flirting. Thank you. Totally. That That's probably one of the truest things. It is kind of my way of flirting. Why are you flirting with her? I don't know. It's what I, I like flirting. Oh shit, Caroline Morris, this is likely a step backwards. I know that's what Caroline, that's what um, the panel was saying. Yeah, you guys get it? Okay. I guess that's why you guys are, follow the show. It's my way of being friends. Yeah. Like I, like if I if I'm sitting in the seat behind you and I pull your hair. Like I flick my kids ears gently all the time. That's my way of telling them I love them. Dink, 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 dink. I pull their ears, I squeeze them. I love squeezing their hamstrings. Uh, um, oh, Caroline's now going to give me a, this is, I think important. Uh, can you accept her victimhood mindset as what it is? Yeah, that's important. I, I see what you're saying. You want to get, make this conversation real for a second, not needing her to be something she is not first. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. You're saying that I'm trying to. I'm trying to be friends with her by getting her to accept me. But if it was a sincere effort or maybe the, uh, I don't know if sincere is the right way, but a, 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 a genuine effort and another valid effort is to accept her for who she completely is, regardless of what I think about playing the victim. And like, I can even drop that story that I tell about her in order to be your friend so that she can. Wow. God damn. Damn, what if you were my mom? You would, God, you would suck as a mom, Caroline. You would f be fucking your kids up left, right, and center. God, you guys, this is so good. Can you accept her victimhood mindset? And that's in quotes, not that she really is that, and I appreciate that, as what it is, is not needing her to be something she is not first. God damn. I know you just read that out of a self-help book or some shit.
Yeah, flirting's cool. Uh, Rambler, uh, Sevon, done with MRI today. What'd you get an MRI for? Yeah, those are kind of scary. I, I don't have any claustrophobia, and the two times that I've experienced claustrophobia is I had to go into the trunk of a, uh, I had to go onto the trunk of a, um, into the trunk of a car one time to go film at a drug house, and then another, and then the MRI. Man, the MRI is confining. Holy shit. Okay. That's good shit, Caroline. Thanks for fucking up the humor in my show and just dropping a big fat wisdom bomb. Caroline Morris. Yes, exactly. Just let her be that. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I don't know if I'm going to take your advice, but I know it's true. So if whatever that, um, I don't know if you know if it was advice or you were just like pointing at something, but either way, I hear you. I'm I'm so inspired by the relationship as part of bits that um but but you're right. You're right. Uh thanks for ruining it. Uh Philip Kelly, four ninety nine. Let's post one with your face on Brian Friend next. I'll send you one. I'd love my head on Snuffleupagus. <clears throat> well, I don't know, Kyle. I don't think that's exactly what she's saying. I think it's better to not accept it. If you accept it, it will help her accept that mindset. I, I, I don't think that's what... I, I, I think, you know, who's really good at this is Athena Perez. I, I think you can accept people without validating their, their position. It, it's, it's like um, address the person, not the, um, not the behavior. And so right now I'm addressing her behavior. And, and like, and, and, but, but, but if I just addressed her and not the behavior, it would be totally different. So I've seen her behavior and I'm addressing it. But when, when I used to, I used to work with, uh, for five years, I worked basically 24 hours a day with developmentally disabled adults. And that was one of the things it's like, don't address the behavior, address the person. That's kind of, that's kind of like what we're dealing with here, right? So it's like I'm not I, I I'm not um so so she she acts out a lot and then I'm I'm just like fooling around with it. So um oh uh, Ken Walters I always took it as sexual tension if someone paid me this much attention. What dude I <laughs> I uh there's no uh yeah i'll just leave yeah there's there's no um denying that there is some validity to your statement when it comes to human beings yeah i, I, I have nothing to say i have nothing it's a very um, honest. Uh, uh, Caroline Morris, I'm working with the premise that it is not anyone's job to change her. It's her journey. Dang, stop. God damn it. I don't say that on the show anymore. I, right? I don't say that anymore. I got rid of that. I tried to get rid of that. Wow, Caroline Morris. She's just flipping through a self-help book right now, dropping bombs. Jake Chapman, wow, look at this illustration. Once you've been deep sea diving, swimming in a pool doesn't seem daunting. Kenneth DeLapp, is there any other tension other than sexual tension? Wow. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to get into that. But, I did, but, but uh, I'll tell you, Fanny Spiegel, you are lying through your teeth. I will tell you that. You are lying through your teeth.
Yeah, that was that was dumb that she can't went out Athena. Uh what's crazy in the, in those texts that you can see that Athena posted, what's crazy is is it for it, it's it's totally one of those people. It's like, hey, can I come over to your house and play? And then the person's like, No, I'm busy. And then you're like, Are you sure I'm gonna bring cake? And then uh, Athena's like, no, sorry, not today. Um, and, and by the way, I don't eat cake. And then it's like, well, I'm going to be outside at your front door. So when you're ready, let me in. And it's like, hey, dude, I'm not even home. And then the last one is like, I'm going to tell people that you're mean and don't let me come over. And it's like, holy shit. I mean, like at that point, you're like, wow. I, I, I mean, you can see. Uh, yeah, Sporty Beth definitely escalates quickly to like some sort of. um. um some the it, well the irony is is it's just bullying shit right you don't get what you want and you just start strong arming people sorry guys jokes are fun too yeah i like jokes but i but i hear you i, I hear you i love the value and what you're saying is like what you're saying is definitely important it's like i gotta be careful like i fuck with my kids and my wife like that too a lot like if I see, like I can't help it. It's like seeing a, you know, when you see like a loose string on something and you're supposed to just cut it off with some scissors, but instead you pull it and it unravels the whole shirt or like you have a tag and instead of cutting it off, you rip it off and now you got a hole in your shirt. That's sometimes what I do to people. Like I see my wife, like a string dangling, you know, and instead of like gently cutting off, I just pull on it and try to unravel her whole shit. I always regret it. And yet I'm like a little kid. I can't stop. So. Eric Weiss, Sevon has a great voice. Well, thank you. Cave Dastro unravels the whole shirt. Okay, okay, okay. Enough of this nonsense. Okay, well, that was fun. Um, back to the show notes. Uh, I, I want to talk about the back. Uh, Ramaswamy. Shit, I didn't put the link in here. There's a there's a video on Instagram going around that he took a scholarship from George Soros. Someone sent it to me. And uh, Soros is a bad, bad dude. A bad, 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 bad dude. And uh, if you don't know about him, you should look into him. Uh, son of so as i recall his son he's a, a jewish man uh at the age of 14 he lost his mom and dad to the nazis and he in turn would work with the nazis one of his uncles was a nazi and so he would go door to door basically taking uh, with his uncle and the ss taking uh jewish people to fucking wherever they took jewish people to when they before they roasted them put the tags on their house, all that shit was part of the, uh, part of the genocide, but he was 14, right? He was 14. And, um, he was doing it in order to, uh, probably to stay alive to, to be fair. And, uh, cause he's 14, right? And, and he's, and he's trying not to, I, I don't know if the, the details, are right. You guys look into it yourself, but he's trying to stay alive. He's 14 years old, Jew boy. And uh, he's trying to stay alive and not get fucking torched by the Nazis. And so he ends up uh, being an inside man, right? And I think his parents got fucking toasted. And he comes to this country and he starts in, and, and he's, full, he's, full, he's a full blown, he is a full blown Nazi. I mean, he's a full blown BLM motherfucking guy. He is as racist as they get. He is a dark man. He is a dark, I don't mean his skin. He's white, he's white as shit. But he is he is the epitome of uh, of of wokeness. He is fucked up. And uh, basically, what he does is he gives people money and puts them in position. Uh, gives people money to run an office to get them in positions of power. Right, a lot of uh, district attorneys, shit like that, chiefs of police, shit like that. Where then he and he gets these people who are more let more or less Marxists or communists uh, believe that the media should basically be in bed with the government and that people should be ju judged by their skin color. It is some it is some really crazy socialist shit. 
uh, uh, Mad Marv, it, it, look into him. It, it, it's kind of almost too much to look into him, to be honest with you. As you start hearing more and more about him, crazy successful, crazy wealthy. Mad Marv, uh, he addressed it. Vivek Ramaswamy addressed it. There were zero strings attached to the scholarship. It was up for grabs, and he would be a fool to turn down the money. I know. And hey, uh, Mad Marv, the other thing that people, and that's why I want to have um, Dreamware on and have the discussion because I think he's really down on Vivek, and I really like Vivek. I also don't think that that's a reason to, to, to not like him, but it's definitely a point of contention. To see, because the people who are who have come out of the Soros camp are trip, and he was listed on the WEF, you know, like best leaders, and I know he addressed that also, and he he is part of Big Pharma, and he addressed that also, and and I I give him passes on all of those so far because of what he said about those experiences. Oh, my city is a Soros city. Wow. District attorneys and mayors. Yeah, it, those are fucked up places. I bet you your city has a shitload of crime. Anyway, there is that uh, conspiratorial concern that maybe he is a uh, Trojan horse, right? That he's just another Soros dude trying to get into power. Uh, I don't think this country can do another four years of that shit. But I'm going to try to get Dream Rare on. He's blown up, man. I saw a picture with him and um, saw a picture with him and Joe Rogan on the internet. That was cool. Hanging out together. I also saw him interviewing Roseanne Barr. Tank, did you see that? I saw Dream Rare uh, interviewing Roseanne Barr. I know you're big on her. Hey, uh, Tank says, uh, dude, the whole government needs to burn. Well, the interesting thing about that is, is that is kind of um, his... That's one of his stances. And that that's probably what scares a lot of people. Sevi, you seem deflated today. You want a hug? No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not home. And so it's like slowly taking a toll on me. You know what I mean? I'm not in my own bed. I'm not in my in my in my regular routine, but I'm good. I'm I'm so good. I'm so happy. It's a beautiful day. As soon as I'm done here, the, uh, we're going to walk across the street. I bought the boys a surfboard. They're going to go surfing. I ordered a wetsuit from Amazon from them for them for like 40 bucks. Um, they're pumped. Everything's good. Dude, the jiu-jitsu's off the hook. Life's good. Life's good. I, I, I might, maybe I'm just, my coffee's not that strong. I'm not, I'm not drinking Paper Street coffee, but I'm good. Everything's great. Happy, happy as a clam. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Um, I like this. Uh, I like this. Just a little reminder. Just a reminder for everyone. Hit the weights. Lift heavy. Sets of five once in a while. Right? Do a little bodybuilding. A little bodybuilding. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Muscles are where you dispose of glucose. The difference between you and someone with type 2 diabetes so bad that they're going to get their digits amputated is an extra one teaspoon of glucose in the bloodstream. That's how critical it is that we regulate our blood sugar. And the most important part of blood sugar regulation is having muscles that are big enough to put the glucose into and that are insulin sensitive enough to respond to the signal of insulin. Muscles are where you dispose of glucose. Ooh, I just like that. That's the takeaway. That's it. That's it. Muscles are where you dispose of glucose. There's nothing. That's it. That's it. Audrey, I did a ass workout yesterday, bodybuilding over Metcons. Just put you up on like a stool and just run full speed into your ass. Wham. Sounds awful. Who's the guy who used to wrestle girls? That was, that's so cool. Have you guys, have you seen this fucking girl? I made, I, this is how, if you want to, if you ever are curious how cool my wife is. Anyway, the, the, real quick, I don't want to lose that. Um, you have to, uh, you have to, you have to be buff. You got to do some shit. You got to do sets of five. You gotta do bench press. You gotta do the st- heavier squats than you want to. You got you got you got to get buff. Give a fuck who you are. Get buff. 
I want to show you this fucking girl. I'm just, I'm, uh, uh God, where is she? This girl is, oh, here she is. God damn. I spent so long, I spent fucking 20 minutes on this girl's Instagram last night. Fucking, I made my wife go through it with me. This is fucking nuts, dude. I think this might be the most, I really do think bigger is better. I, sorry. I mean, there's some nuances to it, but I, I can't even fucking believe this is real. She says in here somewhere that she's 215 pounds. 215. That's her dad. Her dad's 6'3". I mean, clearly she's wearing high heels in that, but still. Dude, look at when she slaps her thighs. Look at what movement you get. None. Oh, yeah, pool boy. God, me and you are, God, me and you need to hang out. She had an OnlyFans. I'd climb her so hard. Yeah, like, what, 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 what the fuck is this? Look at her brother. 710. If she grabbed me on the inside of my like leg like that, she'd get a surprise. My God, dude, this is just crazy. I don't like the Seb on podcast. He just ogles women. All right. Fine. Don't like it then. I can't deny I'm not ogling her. Look at her face, dude. How is she so normal? She doesn't even have like filters and shit on. She's seven feet tall and just normal. Five nine is in her tits. Her boobs aren't real, are they? Those are implants. Does like there's somewhere there's a close up shot of her face, and it's just it's just crazy. Look at this. She D one breeder. What does this mean? Anyone want guaranteed D one babies? Asking for me. Oh my god. She's basically saying that whatever kid she has. Will be division one athletes. Oh, look at David Weed. Uh, dude, just say it. You like men. I don't know, dude. I don't see any man in this. But I, but I hear you. I'm open. Uh, Mike, uh, I'm five seven, uh, and I literally can stand tall and have her melons just resting on my head. God, this is crazy. It is just crazy. I, I wonder what the male equivalent to her is. Dude, she even, she moves good. Look at this. Look at this. This, this. I remember I showed this one to my wife. What are the benefits of being seven feet tall? I don't know. But all I know is the short kings think I'm too tall and the tall kings only like short queens. You're out of your fucking mind. I, hey. I swear to God, I bet you I could talk my wife into letting her move in. You want me to call her and ask her? You want to see how want to see how this goes? I don't know, Yao Ming, really? I don't know. I don't know, dude. This is I don't know, dude. It it's too this she's too much though. It's fucking ridiculous. I I'm hoping that it's like not even real. I'm hoping like on some level it's like she's lying. She's really only 6'3", I mean, which would still be crazy, right? Okay, okay, okay. Look at this. This is fucking nuts. Look how good she moves. Look how good she moves. This is nuts. Oh, she has her hand on the counter. It's pretty good. Oh, my God. What?
Hey, she, in, in here, she says what she is, too. She's like, I forget what she is, but it's like Cuban and something else. Oh, what is this on the basketball? Can you dunk without jumping? Maybe her boobs are real. No, she's standing on something. Oh, something was underneath her. No. Okay. Maybe she can't dunk. Jeez, Louise. Anyway, uh, what's her Instagram? Uh, Marie, Marie, Marie Tamara. Tall, natural model athlete. Oh, and she has another account, D1 Breeder. Oh, and she's 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 saving the world by posting these pictures. Oh, I didn't know that. No, I'm joking. She didn't say that. Yeah, she does look Polynesian, right? But aren't they like tiny little uh, women? Uh, Bruce Wayne, I've never seen Cuban women that tall. Yeah, I, I know that when I saw what she, she was like, uh, she's part giraffe. Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, Jay Hartle, her boobs are real. Oh, God, I would love it if she came on the show. I, hey, anytime someone's like, oh, I love how deep and honest and true and blah, 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 Sevon is, just be like, no, he's superficial as fuck. He wants to be friends with a girl because she's seven feet tall. Because I do. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, uh, I wonder if my wife would. Well, imagine if she was in your house. Where would she sit in the minivan if she's part of my family? It's fake. She's not even seven feet tall. Hello? Hi, babe. Hey. I was just going to text you. Oh, what's up? Um, Joseph is going on a walk with me. Avi and Ari are, are here. Oh, oh, okay. Is he old enough to be home alone? <laughs> he is now. Hey, I got a question for you. You don't have to answer now, but I'm just wondering. <laughs> are um, you still in the air? Yeah. No. Um, do you remember that girl I showed you on Instagram yesterday? Mm, oh, the really tall girl. Yeah. Yes. Um. Is she coming on your show? Uh, I mean, not I, not yet. I haven't got a hold of her yet. Um. Uh. Could, could she? Would you be okay if she lived with us? Oh shoot! I think the dog's pooping in the house. I gotta go okay. clean it up. Okay. Bye. I hope Sarah didn't hear that. Uh, you think that's real? You think the dog really pooped in the house or she just didn't like the question? Easy, Tiger. What? What? <laughs> oh, my goodness. My dog doesn't poop in the house. What is she talking about? She didn't like the question. Uh, well, let me see. Then I'll text her. Let me text her. She is a saint. My wife is a saint. That's why I think I could get away with murder. I think I could. Um, oh shit! I for, I forgot. Uh, I forgot uh, you. I forgot. I forgot about you. Andrew Hiller says I can't come on. I said I forgot about you. Uh, oh, uh, Pamela was supposed to come on. So we had two guests cancel this week. Look, do you see how the universe works in mysterious ways? Sarah Sigmund's daughter and uh, Mike from Atascadero CrossFit. And uh, 
came on, surprise, but Adam Clink and Pamela Gagnon, Gagnon, whatever, the, what, what, what's her name? The, the Mayhem Gymnastics Wonder God is. They canceled because of your sporty Beth picture. Oh, says uh, Gabe Death. I'm going to call my wife again. I'm all nervous and shit. No, she didn't cancel. They rescheduled. Well, when I say uh, they both rescheduled, they, they both had really valid reasons. Like, like, you know. So they, they didn't cancel. Sorry, canceled is not uh, right. They rescheduled. Okay. Uh, all right. That's enough of the tall girl. Remind me. Remind me. I'm. Not, I'm gonna try not to bring it up to my wife at all today, and then remind me. I'll call her again tomorrow. Let's see. Let's see what she. Uh, what she says. Okay. Here we go. Uh, uh, Vivek Rama Swami. Uh, oh shit! This this video has no sound. Oh, shit. They took down the sound. All right. Fuck it. I guess we'll do that. Isn't that weird? I mean, obviously, it had sound before. How do they do that? Okay. Here, here, Here's one. Here's one. Holy shit. Can, you're not going to believe this guy's tattoo. What a mess. What a mess. Okay. Here we go. You guys ready? Here we go. I remember when I was growing up, I was like a mega punk rocker and I was just super anti-establishment, super anti-system, oppression, stupid laws telling me how to think, how to live my life, people trying to dictate what I do, you know, I was like super punk rock when I was a kid. Like I had a whole mohawk as like a foot tall for like most of my teenage years, you know, I grew up in New York and you know, I realized it's kind of funny. You can't really be a punk rocker and be a liberal anymore because that has become the establishment. So if you want to be a punk rocker, you by definition have to be a conservative. It's the weirdest thing. And like, you know, I know you're probably going to get all mad and try to defend your point. Like, oh, well, they're Christians. Like, that just makes you the bigot, strangely enough. <laughs> so uh, good on all you Christians for being real punk rockers while the world has gone ultra establishment, ultra oppression, ultra government overreach. So, uh. Yeah, you can't be big government and be a punk rocker. That makes no fucking sense at all. So, that's this is there's a shout out to all you globalists out there. Keep doing what you're doing. We'll see how long it lasts. Damn, he's good. Damn, he's good. Hi. I really was joking. Oh. <laughs> I, I realized after shit that wasn't a good one. Oh, I was goodness. trying to like avoid the question, like. Oh my goodness. Like you did? Yeah. Are you still on? Yeah, I'm still on. Oh, you're texting me. All right. Um, Answer the question. She can she move in with us or not? Whatever you want. Thank you. Oh, can you imagine her in the... Can you, could you imagine her in the minivan with us? We could get an adult. We could get a giant adult stroller, and she could push me and you around. Perfect. And the kids. That's what you're. That's what you're imagining if she lives with us. Man. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. All right. I love you. I'm glad the dog poop was a joke. I'm glad. All. I'm glad the dog poop was a joke. Let me do the jokes. Funny. I don't know. It scared the shit out of me. Like Sarah was listening. And she's going to think our dog shit in the house. Well, I guess it's good payback for me. I guess it was good payback for me. Here I'm asking if a seven foot woman can move in with us and you're fucking with me. So I guess it's a point, Haley. Thank you. Thank you. I need mean, some point. Are, is is Philip Kelly? Philip Kelly said he's going on a walk with you and Joseph. Is he out there? Um. Oh, hey, Philip. What's up? Oh, that's cool. No, I don't see him. Oh, all right. All right. I love you. Bye. That's her. Just fuck with she, she and she won. Did you see that? Fuck. I felt my back get all weird. See how that works?
I think I'm going to fuck with her and ask her on the air if some chick can move in with us. And instead, I fucking got destroyed. Fucking hate that. Uh, Sevi, uh, I'm going to have to uh, kink shame you on the stroller one. Oh, fine. I, I don't care. Kink, kink shame me. Uh, Judy Reed, uh, Haley's a good dude. She convinced me I was stressed out for her having to clean up. Me too. Uh, my, the dog's this big. His poops are like rabbit pellets. So, I mean, it's... But that dog hasn't pooped in the house in 10 years, 20 years. That dog did shit in Greg Glassman's uh, bedroom before. I did panic. I full panic. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it's it's just funny how things have changed, right? The punk rockers used to be uh, liberals, and now libs have become our full establishment. So it's such a trip, right? In right in one lifetime, we just like right in like a year, we saw it all happen. Uh, I love everybody too. I just want you to know that a part of me, somewhere inside, like Sarah was saying, life is love. Love is life. I mean, it is. It is a fun, a fun space to be in. Uh, this guy, Bird for Governor, is running for Governor of Washington State. And here we go. Very clear. I do not discriminate against anyone. And then if you're LGBTQAI+, you're my brother, you're my sister, but what I'm saying very clearly, leave our children alone. Stay away from our children, stay out of school. But on that same note, if a child presents as being gay or homosexual, I will love them. They are welcome in my house. We'll, be, we'll break bread together. We'll have fellowship. I love everyone. All I'm saying is we've gone to a part where we have drag queen shows and it's wrapped in a wrapper of Disney and invite your children. Now, a parent has their unalienable right to do and to lead and to guide their children. And I support that regardless on which side you're on. But when you're bringing that and establishing it as a societal norm and you're influencing in the, the children in the schools, right. that is not their job, it is not their role. Let children be children, let parents be parent. And let's get back to actually educating our children. I'm very clear. Thank you. God, wouldn't it be great if Washington State got you as their governor? Mm-mm-mm. That's a good dude. Political candidate running for governor of Washington, 2024. Purple Heart recipient, a uh, former Marine and Green Beret. A behavioral scientist, got a great smile. Governor Inslee will not seek fourth term uh, semi bird in the running. Good. What is that his name? Semi? Is that a name? Semi? Washington Democratic. Oh, let's let's watch one more on this guy. I haven't I haven't watched this. Let's watch this. Governor Jay Inslee announcing he will not seek a fourth term. Quote, during a decade of dynamic change, we've made Washington a beacon for progress for the nation. I'm ready to pass the torch. And now a veteran and conservative school board member throwing his hat in the ring for the top job. His name is Semi Bird, a U.S. Marine veteran and Army Special Forces Green Beret. Thank you for both of those aspects of your service, sir. And he joins us now. Semi, why are you jumping into this race in this very, very blue state? Well, I'll tell you, the, the current administration has led our state to the precipice. You know, we're, we're trampling on the, on the Constitution, it seems, every day. We've taken away our Second Amendment rights just recently. We're dividing families from children and supporting the concept of children as young as 13 doing sex changes when they can't even get a tattoo, buy cigarettes, or serve their nation, let alone the, 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 the homelessness, the lawlessness, the breakdown of our education system. There are so many reasons for this call to action, for this call to duty, and I'm equal to the task. It's just that simple. You know, Sammy, you mentioned. Hey, um, it's crazy that they were that 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 governor thinks that he's he how much pro that he's made a lot of progress. The guy before him, and then this guy. I mean, Washington State is the state, by the way, where they can take your kids away if your uh, if your kid wants a sex change operation and you don't you don't acknowledge it or or get them on the path of looking into it. Um, 
when they're the age of at the age of 13, the state can take your kid away. That that's like true in Washington. So let's say your kids at school and they go to their counselor and they're like, Hey, I want, it's a girl. And she's like, I want to be a boy. And I, and my parents won't let me even like to talk to anyone about it. The, the state can take your kid away. It's fucking, that's real shit in that state. Riley S. Sevon, uh, you know he has zero chance in Washington with Seattle. And hey, I know you guys think that zombies is like a metaphor or a illustration or hyperbole. Some people do. That state has like real zombies in it. If you don't believe it, go look. Go to Portland and Washington. Go to Seattle. The streets are full of zombies. I've been saying it for more than five years. And what's funny is, is when I first started the podcast, there was that story of one of the zombies bit a man's ear off and they said you could see his fucking brain, an old man. There's people there like literally just walking around like zombies. Um, uh, you know, what's funny is uh, I buy coffee every morning at six o'clock at a bar here called Dory's Deli. And the bartender there was saying that on his way to work yesterday morning, he saw a zombie fucking in the street, his word, not mine. And it got hit by a car and it flew like 20 feet in the air and then just got up and started walking. You can turn yourself into a zombie too. Just start, just start doing a shitload of drugs Put your, and, and watch your shit just fucking your brain deteriorate to a point where you're basically just dead and you're just channeling just addiction. It's fucking gross. Yeah. Most, yeah, yeah. They're, that's kind of a, a, they're more like, you know, there's the pupa stage. Like you go from being a human to being in the cocoon to then rebirthing as a zombie instead of a butterfly. And man. Chris uh, Besterfeld, Beesterfeld, uh, drugs are bad. They sure fucking are. Anyway, uh, I invited that guy on the show. Let's see if he uh, comes. It'd be cool to talk to him. Right? I like his his. I like that. I love everyone. This is the third time I've shown this on the show. The third time. Maybe fourth. I don't know. Someone tell me. But this one does not get old. And so we're going to uh, listen to it again. The insights into the human brain and being a victim. Ready, go. He did an experiment with a group of women. Yep. And they put scars on their faces. And yep. they told these women that they're going into a job interview. And the purpose of the experiment is to find out whether people with facial disfigurements face discrimination. Uh, they showed them the scars in the mirror. The women saw themselves with these scars. And as they led them out of the room, they said, we're just going to touch it up a little bit. And as they touched it up, they removed the scarring completely. So the women went into the job interview thinking that they are scarred but actually being their normal selves. And the result of the experiment is that those women then came back reporting massively increased level of discrimination. Indeed, they, many of them came back with comments that the interviewer had made that they felt were referencing their facial disfigurement. And this is why I think this ideology of victimhood is so dangerous, because if you preach to people constantly that we're all oppressed, then that primes people to look for that. They first hand witness of that shit. First hand witness of that. Almost every day when I hear people talk. The being trapped in your head phenomenon. Hi. Here we go. Joe Westerlin. First time I stayed at Hotel Eastlund in Portland, now near Greg Glassman's house. I asked the dude at the front desk, where's the zombies at? He laughed and directed me to a nearby park. Sure enough. Yeah, that's awesome. Now you don't even, now they're just everywhere. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. They're everywhere. Cave Dastro, it's all in your head. It sure is. Um, uh, what, did, Kenneth, I, I don't know how to put my sponsors up there. I don't know how to pay. Uh, Paper Street Coffee, Birth It. I'm going on the Birth It podcast. 
really pumped. It might be next Thursday. CA peptides. Oh, I know how to do them. I know how to do that. That one I do know how to do. Uh, see, I put the code up there. Dude, so many of you, by the way, have reached out to me about peptides. So many. And I apologize. I, 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 I'm trying to get back to all of you as fast as I can and, and give you all the details and Amazon links to where I got my needles and my bariostatic water. And I'm trying to point you, like tell you, but like I'm fucking by far not the expert, but I'm really, excuse me, I'm really happy that I took that journey with them. I'm taking the, I took the week off at the games. And then when I went back, I got back on them again, putting them in this bicep all right here. Twice I shot it into my back by my spine. And then, uh, and then I'm taking the week off while I'm here also. I've just heard that it's good to take some breaks from it. Um, but I'll continue probably for at least another couple months. Um, and then, uh, then I'll be healed. But like I said, I did, um, Right before I left on this trip, I did do uh, I did 20 negative muscle ups where I jumped at the top and lowered myself through while kind of alternating on the assault bike. And then I did 10 strict muscle ups in singles, but I started each one at the top, lowered myself down and then did a strict one with an L sit. And the next day, my bicep was a little sore, but no pain, no nothing. So I think that shit's working. Oh, Dick Butter. D wow. Day 30 of uh, BPC 157 in my low back. How's it working? Yeah, you know what really pushed me over the edge, which is kind of crazy to see how easy I'm influenced, is um, I heard, I saw Huberman say in a, in a reel somewhere that he did two shots of BPC in his back and his, his sore back of fucking 10 years was better. Uh, get a new bed yet, uh, Sevon? No. Matter of fact, I, I have two beds, and one of the beds like is is really good, and one of them is ass, and I still sometimes sleep on the ass one like a jackass. Huberman, Huberman, Bully, Pool, Critton, Critton. Uh, Dick Butter, uh, my back isn't cured, but it's the best it's been in three years. Wow. Hey, do you do it yourself? Uh, is BPC gateway to TRT? Fuck no. Not not for me. Not in the slightest. Hey, I don't feel any extra strength. I don't have any body composition change. I don't have any of that from the BPC. Still fucking little chubby dad bod marshmallow. Um, I don't have any weird hair growing anywhere. My shit's not receding. I'm 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 not like not, everything's. I might look different this week because I'm I'm in the sun every day and I've quadrupled down on my drinking. But other than that, no, there's no, no, no. Oh, you, oh, you do it into your love handle. I, I stuck it like just like Dick Butter says he puts it in his love handle. Okay, I was putting it like right with I had the two or three times I put it in my back. I put it right, right, like basically where it hurts, like just off to the side of my spine. Yeah, a great question, Eric. I'm no doctor. How do you know the best injection site so you don't hit the veins or nerves? I'm, this needle is tiny, dude. I would stick this thing into my tongue, to be honest with you. This thing is tiny. Can peptides help with limp dick? I could ask Sarah. I'm going to call her. I've never, have I ever called Sarah on the show? I mean, she's not a doctor. I don't know if it's appropriate to call her. Let me see. I'll just call her and ask her. Fuck it. Uh, I have her still in my phone as a Sarah podcast sponsor. It says hormone podcast sponsor. Uh, uh, oh, shit. You know who that we wish I should probably ask is um Andrew uh, Hiller. Oh shit, she hung up. That was quick. You hung up on me. You hung up on me. Um, 
hey, uh, is there a peptide for limp dick? All right. Yeah, I'm, if, if you, I, I think you're supposed to, um, I think you're supposed to put it local where the, wherever the fuck up is. That's my understanding. But if you put it in your love handle, I mean, I don't know what it would do there. Some people, uh, because that shit's supposed to help with gut health, they shoot that shit right into their, like, their abdomen, too. Sean Lenderman, I think I fucked my rotator cuff. Sounds painful needing to shoot that into my shoulder. No, 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 no. no. I'm telling you, there's n this. I'm telling you. This, this is, there's, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, oh. Oh, look, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, new YouTube channel. Did you guys know Sarah's launching a new YouTube channel? I don't think you can drink it. Oh, what's this? Joe Westerlin, BPC 157, TB 500. That's what I take. Uh, and then a CJC 1295. I don't know what that is. Oh, uh, Vindicate. Uh, Heidi, you can just shoot it in your mouth. Joe Westerlin. Also, I also shoot it in the love handle. Wow. What is CJC1295? CJC, let me look. CA peptides. C, this is like a drug show. A drug issue. You take CJC. Shit, I lost it. Twelve nine five. Where where is that comment? Uh, CJC twelve nine five one two nine. Okay. Uh, CJC twelve nine five is an incredibly effective peptide which works by stimulating the release of your own body's growth hormones. Oh yeah, I don't think I'd fuck with that. Let me see if California Peptides takes that. CA peptides. Uh oh, it's so funny. Okay, here we go. Let me see. Uh I think you can use code Sevon and get some sort of discount here too, by the way. Uh B here's the BPC. Here's the BPC T B blend. Oh shit. There it is. CJC twelve nine five. Uh there's two different kinds. Wow. Uh there's a there's a DAC. I wonder what that means. And then there's a non DAC. They're both five milligrams. Wow. I bet you that shit, Joe, will, will that shit make you stronger? God, you, you, it's so tempting. Yeah, Caroline Morris, uh, not only with the emotional, uh, intellectual, and spiritual wisdom, but also with some superficial knowledge. Yeah, they're just diabetic needles. Yeah, they're tiny. Uh, bacteriostatic water and insulin needles off Amazon. Yeah, that's what I where I got them. Anyway, uh. My daughter is fixing to start growth hormone. I had no idea all the risks associated with that. Your hair looks good, Sebi. That's what my wife told me. You know, I'm wearing it down because that I saw that guy, that porn, born porn, the porn primitive, porn primitive. Oh, my goodness. The born primitive guy um, had his hair down and he looked like a stud. I was like, I wonder if I can look like that. Uh, so who are the sponsors for the show? Uh, Paper Street Coffee. Use code word seven. Paper Street Coffee. If the code word doesn't get you a discount, you're on the wrong fucking site. People always order from the wrong site. Don't order from the wrong pa uh, Paper Street. Uh, CA Peptides. Birth Fit. Or mo mothers and fathers go who are interested in having a baby, a healthy, safe baby. Good experience like-minded people who want the best for their child who are probably 
in large part, uh, people who uh, subscribe to accountability and personal responsibility. People who are interested in truth instead of what they want to hear, maybe. Birth fit, but people who believe in the power of the vagina. I, I made that up. That, I'm, I'm just telling you what I think about them. I think that they believe in. I think there's a strong, strong belief in, um, in, in women there. To, and, and an understanding of what a man's role is in the partnership or support role of a woman growing a baby inside of her. And how normal and yet profound it is. Crazy normal. Maybe one of the most normal things on planet Earth, dude. Right? And yet probably the most profound thing. So normal. So yes. Yeah, so what? You grew a baby inside of you. All women can do it. But on the other hand, holy shit. You might be growing something inside of you that's going to make a rocket ship that goes to fucking outer space. I mean, it's just nuts. Hashtag women. Hashtag semen in women. Whatever, however it happens. I have to go back to the email my mom sent me. Teach me how to get Haley pregnant. My God. Block that shit out of my mind. Uh, post in seven. Why do people give me stink eye when I wear CEO t-shirt to the workout? Because they hate it. They hate it that you that you believe in personal accountability, responsibility, and love for all of humanity. They hate how much belief they feel the stress instead of like being appreciative of how much you believe in them as a human being. They see it as stress. They see it as stress. They're not like, oh my God, that guy, that guy believes in himself and believes in me. Believes in my potential. They're like, oh my God. What an asshole. He 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 probably thinks it. Like you can change your whole life by changing your diet and working out. He 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 probably he probably thinks it's he, he probably thinks it's it's a it's a it's a bad idea to choose someone based on their merit instead of their what what genitalia they have in their pants. Oh my god, he he thinks it's okay for women to give vaginal birth. That's what that CEO shirt says. Some people just don't like that shit. Sevi, how do you feel about your kids having a different accent? Uh, accent to you? You mean like when they whine to me? I hate that shit. Like I, or when they change, like when they put emotion in their responses, I can't stand that shit. Or do you mean like a different accent? Like how my dad sounds like he's middle Eastern and I sound like I fell off the fucking threes company. I sound like a TV dude. When I listen to the show, I'm actually like, well, I kind of, I kind of sound like I'm part TV, but I've also listened to too much rap music. I think I think the way I say critin is like hood. Critin. I wonder how hood dudes say that. Critin. Bully. I say bully. I'm say I say say bullets. I bet uh, kids are going to start asking their parents if they were born vaginally or C-section. What do you, what do you, I, I bet they're going to start? I did. Doesn't everyone ask that? I can't remember what the answer was. I don't think I breastfed. I think I just had to slap my mom around a little bit for that. Critten. Thank you. Critten. Heidi Kroom, sometimes I talk British to sound smart. I, if I could do it, I would. Chipotle. Oh, here we go. Did, uh, was that um, from Sarah or from Fox News? Oh, she didn't respond to my limp dick question yet. Damn. Oh, shit. I'm on a text thread with my sister and uh, my wife. My sister's given my wife props for... Um, she said, uh, good job, Haley, with the dog shit story. And Haley said, I knew he was going to ask that. But then I was like, oh, shit, what if Sarah's listening? 
you knew I was going to ask if the tall chick could live with us? How do you know the fuck do you know that? Okay. Um, I know this isn't to show that um, we're supposed to be judgmental at all. We're supposed to be open-minded and love everyone here at the Sevon Podcast. We just are. But I really want you to judge the shit out of this lady. This is... Uh, uh, please tell me there's audio. What the fuck is this lady? Okay, this is uh this is uh Vivek uh Ramaswamy on uh, MSNBC. Wow. The name of her show is Simone. Wow. My god, this is what a this chick is a shit starter. Here we go. You talk about your campaign. I think I've, I've just heard a preview of your debate strategy. You talk about your campaign travel. You've spent about 19 days campaigning in Iowa, 15 days campaigning in New Hampshire, only three days in South Carolina. But you've appeared on more than 70 podcasts. What, is, is this your strategy to, to, to reach voters? I'd say our strategy in this campaign is talk to everyone. I'm not running to lead a political party. I am running to lead a nation. Well, and so, so I've gone to places to where you, people don't go. You yeah. are you are running to lead a political party. You're running to be the Republican not, nominee for president. I'm running to lead the so. United States of America, actually. I'm running. But, but this is really important, Simone, is the way that I'm running this primary is a little bit different than the other candidates, because I'm already planning for our ultimate destination, leading a national revival. I was going to mention I've been to the south side of Chicago. I've gone to Kensington in the middle of Philadelphia. These are places where any Republican politician or consultant would tell you, you'd be crazy to waste time there in the middle of a primary. I don't see it that way. Many people might even say that about coming on MSNBC. There are other candidates who have said that they won't talk to NBC News because NBC News is not nice to Republicans. My view is if I'm not willing to sit across the table from folks like you, I'm not ready to sit across the table from Xi Jinping. You know, you talk about your campaign. I think I've, I've just heard a damn i think i was too harsh to her she's not i said she oozes angry 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 but she's not as bad as i remember i must have been in some sort of mood i apologize simone i apologize uh 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 cave <clears throat> sevi when are you moving to a palatial estate in some rural state. I went and filmed with Joe Westerlin once, the guy who was on the show, and he lived in, I don't know where the fuck he lived, Omaha, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, something. I think it had an O in it. Across it, Omaha, Omaha State, Omaha. Where do they play the uh, World Series of ba uh, College Baseball? What state is that? wherever that is. And I went and visited him and it was during the summer and I was filming with him and I was filming with some other people there. I was filming with uh, his wife, Libby and uh, Ricky and I can't remember who else. Omaha, Nebraska. Come on now. Okay. Thank you. And It was the middle of the summer and I went there and I went out and walked around during the day and there was no one out during the day. Nobody, nobody. And me and my wife and the dog that she said we should upstairs were out walking around. I'm like, this is so fucking weird that no one's out. And we walk into this beautiful, huge park and, and it was hot. It was, it was over a hundred degrees and really humid and it, it, even some showers and shit. I'm like, man, no one in this town fucking walks anywhere. Beautiful Whole Foods. Just just a great place. Not one person for hours we're out. And then we walk down into this park area, massive view park with a pond. And I'm like, man, there's a lot of mosquitoes here. And I look down and my little 14-pound dog is covered in like 3,000 mosquitoes, completely covered. And when I wiped his back to wipe the mosquitoes off of him, he was covered in blood. And we ran back to the car, mosquitoes everywhere, and... uh uh, the dog was covered in bumps for like a week. Hundreds of little bumps where it got fucking eaten by bugs. And while we were there, 
I also looked at some homes there and like for five hundred thousand dollars, you could have a forty three foot home, forty three hundred square foot home on a on a on a river or a lake or something. I couldn't even believe it. And it was like half a million dollars. I was like, wow, we would leave, live like kings here. But um, but the, the, uh, the, uh, like the environment just is, doesn't seem conducive to just chilling between the bugs and the heat and the I guess now that I'm older, I don't know. I guess I could see myself living there. Hey, I'm in Newport Beach, California right now. It's like arguably the best place in the world for skateboarding, tennis, and jiu-jitsu. And those are the three things my kids do. So unfortunately, or fortunately, if I, if I were to move, I think I would move even further deeper into the hive. I think, I think, I think one of the kind of the taglines for Newport Peach is like the home of tennis or some shit. Heidi, what do you do for a living that you can listen to the show while you're at work? Take a break and be a guest. Should I do more panel discussions? I really enjoyed that, even though it did not go the way I wanted it to. Did not go the way I wanted it to. I should have stuck with Hillard. He'd have had my back. He'd have fucked me up like Heidi. and um, He wouldn't have fucked me up like Heidi and uh, Mr. Vindicate did. Bullshit. Supposedly, this, these are just some notes. I probably shouldn't. I should probably vet this before I read this. This is like the kind of shit that I think about in um when I'm laying in bed at night. Supposedly, tranny is a bad word, and if you're woke, you'll be offended by it. Imagine how much cooler I am that words like that don't offend me. Oh, I must have been high on myself in my at night in my bed. Connotation and context is everything. I was bathing with a Jew tranny. What's offensive about that? Yeah, what is offensive about that? Yeah, I definitely should have edited that before I read that out to you guys. Here's another here's another subject on uh, being triggered. Oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This one's great. Turn your radios up, people. Turn your fucking radio up. This is great. We may even watch. I watched this like three times. This is so good. This kid's great. Who is this kid? God, this is good. Get this kid a CrossFit gym membership. Someone reach out to this kid and get this kid a gym membership. This kid's got like the body of a, of a dude who played high school uh, uh, football in high school and then just kind of let himself go to shit. Okay, here we go. What are your pronouns? Go yourself. Those are your pronouns? No, you have a true social thing. You're a MAGA asshole. Get the fuck out of my face. Why do you get so mad, brother? Because you're an asshole. You're not being inclusive, though. It's 2023. You're not respecting my pronouns. You. <laughs> have a great day. Out in the, out in the uh, private property. What do you say? Filming people on private property. Oh, no, that's not. He identifies as a camera. His pronouns are camera. You got him. You know, it's funny because it's always the white liberals that get so triggered. What are your pronouns? Go f yourself. Those are your pronouns? No, you have a true social thing. You're a f MAGA asshole. Get the f out of my face. Why do you get so mad, brother? Because you're an asshole. You're not being inclusive, though. It's 2023. You're not respecting my pronouns. You. <laughs> have a great day. How? Doesn't it seem like a bit? How is that guy real? How is that old guy real? Can you imagine getting that triggered by someone? Like if they weren't like threatening your kids or something? Wow. It's crazy. Sevi, uh, is your goal with jiu-jitsu for the kids to make them child champions or is it to make them successful adults? I don't know. Do I have to answer that? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that I kind of don't kind of don't want my kids to play uh, professional sports. It sounds sounds stressful and like guaranteed to get injury, guaranteed. But I don't know. Oh, Seema Globes. I don't start conversations with i have a vagina oh my goodness
honest. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. That's not nice. Mike says, Sevi is applauding him for getting security involved. Not nice. Uh... Uh, uh, um, uh, Jake, uh, Chapman, I can't stop thinking about sporty Beth. Can we talk about her more? Dude, easy, easy. Let's, we'll do it uh, at our, it's chill, buddy. Chill. Chill. We talk about her. We can, we, 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 we can. Go ahead. What do you want to say? Call in. What do you want to say? No, I definitely wouldn't want my boys to compete. At, uh, for, cr cr no. I definitely wouldn't want them to compete as CrossFitters. CrossFit Games athletes? Dude, that sounds horrible. Horrible. I honestly think that it's a sport like it's it's a it, it is of all the sports, it's like the most one that most screams uh, pathological. Like, uh oh, something like really fucked up has happened to you that you're running from. You know what I mean? You know, you know what, you know what I mean. You, you know what I'm saying. Oh shit! Haley is with Philip Kelly. Holy shit! That's fucking hilarious. She just sent me a photo. Fucking a. Barry McCockner. If you insist, I will. Uh, can we get a sporty Sevon shirt made? Holy shit! Holy shit! <laughs> Sporty CEO, where would that go? Oh my god, just take over, just like, oh my god, sporty CEO. And then a silhouette instead of this, instead of this, a silhouette of uh, her body in there. Oh my god, fucking genius, dude. Your kids would fall on Josh Bridges, Chris Spieler, and Colton Merton. Are you kidding me? I have no fucking thank you. Josh Bridges. Josh Bridges is a fucking seal. Being a CrossFit athlete is a fucking afterthought for him. Chris Spieler runs a... I don't, I, I don't want my kids following in Chris Spieler's step, steps. Are you fucking kidding me? Colton Mertens. He's a fucking dog breeder, for fuck's sake. I'd rather, I'd rather they train with Colton Mertens, but have a YouTube station where they build shit with Legos. How's that? Look at Philip Kelly. I'm flirting with Haley. I know. Trust me, I know. Who doesn't? Who the fuck doesn't? This fucking guy yesterday, I don't know if it was yesterday, I'm, it was either yesterday or the day before. I'm inside of a place wrangling up the kids, and I hear Haley say to some man behind me, like, it's clear, like, I'm not with her. Like, I'm like 15 feet away from her. I'm trying to get the kids out of this restaurant or something. And I hear her say to this man, Oh, sorry, am I in your way? And he goes, No, I'm just checking you out. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> All right, fine. I'll go my wife, whatever. I'll go away. She is, she's, she's good. It's all good. She crossfits. Uh, just started back, uh, um, uh, key master zero two, two, five. Let me guess you're a locksmith. I just started back from the beginning. Sevon just loving on the affiliates. The show. Always. All right. I have to pee. I feel like there's some other shit that I should share with you guys that I'm not. Oh, dude, uh, Crash Crucible is coming up. We started meetings um, oh, with uh, JR, uh, Brian Friend, Hiller, uh, Caleb, uh, Souza, uh, Will Brandstetter. It, um, it's going to be a, uh, we're going to crush that. If it looks like they're going to get a, fat pipe in, in at crash crucible. That's just going to be for the stream. And so it sounds like, um, Brian and I are going to commentate it. 
and probably Hiller too. Uh, and Hiller's going to be in charge of cameras there, and it's going to be fucking crazy. It's going to be fun. I'm really excited uh, to kind of. It's, it's like Zelos Games 2.0, but at the Crash Crucible. You know what I mean in terms of like the uh, the production. I'm pumped. It'll be good. It'll really. I mean, Brian. It'll really be the uh, Brian Friend show doing the commentating, and then like I'll just be like cracking jokes or asking the dumb questions that um that the layman needs the answers to us layman but what i'm really excited about is we'll also do some pre-shows pre-hype shows for the crash crucible so we'll get to know the athletes so we do that for the games and that brings some interest to it but i i, I want to see can we do that for the crucible can we have like 10 of those athletes on can brian and i talk about them make predictions have john young tyler watkins spin the whole you know posse on and um the Grundlers, the Grundlers, the Chase Ingrams. Can we, uh, the Pedros, can we get them on and, uh, and really hype this thing? I think we can. Make it, make it fun, right? Pre-show. Yes, Robbie, pre-show. Okay, let me show one more thing before someone fucking 1999s me. Let me see what else I got in here. In the old bag of tricks. Uh, people want me to talk about parenting. I don't know what I have to say about parenting right now. I think I have to be, that's going to be the birth fit the show. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I don't know if this is funny or not, but I just liked it. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, Jake Chapman, Ackerman. At, what's an Ackerman? Jake Chapman, what's an Ackerman? Acronym? Acronym for the Crash Crucible, the CC? Yeah, I'm down with acronyms. Uh, Justin H. Sevon, I will be at Crash to watch. Let me know what I can do to help. Awesome. Thanks, dude. Uh, you know, there will be stuff to, to basically one of the ways we're going to improve the stream. It, it's still going to be a little bit of a ghetto setup, but instead of just streaming from phones, we're going to have a, 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 a internet pipeline that's just for phones for the, those cameras and those cameras are going to be directly hooked up to computers. So the picture will be as good as like my picture or Hiller's picture or Brian's picture or whoever's picture when they come on this show. So the image quality should be out of this world, but there are going to be some fucking crazy jobs like, Hey, can you stand here and make sure no one trips over this tripod or trips over this cord and pulls that computer down from over there. So there will be some really valuable things people can do front row seat to the event, but, um, but tedious, but there, if they'll for sure will be stuff like that. Okay, Justin, that's cool. All right. I won't be there. I think the point of contact for organizing this will end up being the media will end up being uh, Andrew Hiller. Um, but I'll keep you guys posted. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Uh, okay. Here we go. And it's illegal for you to have your dog off leash at any time in New York City. So you have to put your dog on leash, or I'm going to give you a $300 ticket. And I said, I'll put the dog on the leash then. That's fine. Quick question, though. That homeless guy smoking crack with his dick out on the playground behind you? Are we going to have a conversation with him? And the cop was like, uh, do you see a fucking dog with him? And he said, it's a... Uh, true. You, you know that's a true story. You 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 know you know that's a true story. Cop giving you a ticket three hundred dollars for having your dog off a leash, and there's a guy smoking crack with his dick out on a playground, like he should be fucking put in jail for five years, right? And the response is. Do you see a fucking dog with, I mean, it's, it, you, you want to say it's a joke, but, but, but yeah, you know, it's not because you just know how stupid people are. You, you, anyway. Uh, love you guys. Comedy's good. Bloody Marys are better. Love you guys. Uh, oh, what, what is today? What is today? What is today? Today's Friday. Oh shit. CrossFit Games update show. Colton Mertens is coming on tonight. Oh, it's going to be crazy show tonight. Way I invited way too many people. It's going to be nuts. Okay, Colton Mertens is going to be here. Jessica Griffith is going to be here. 
We actually had another special guest who you guys all love, who you haven't seen on the show in a long time, who is going to come on, who we had to push off the show. I apologize, but we will get him back on. Uh, but Brian Spin will be on the show. John Young will be on the show. Uh, Chase Ingram will be on the show. I'll be on the show. Pedro is going to be on the show. Pedro. Uh, and I'll, I'll hopefully be serving, since he has to set his fucking alarm, um, alarm, uh, hopefully I'll let him get a lot of talking in. Cause he, he has to get up in the middle of the night. Uh, Sean Lenderman, a uh, Donald Trump is six, three, 215 pounds with a 13 inch hog. They still like the seven foot tall girl. I prefer to get 215 pounds. Bye-bye.